Though today in ruins and largely buried under silt and sand, the memory of Otrar as a great cultural and commercial center has survived the ages, and even today the oasis retains its original name. Situated at a central point of the great silk roads that once traversed the region, Otrar is mentioned in the works of numerous Arab, Persian and Turkish authors and travelers who visited the site over the centuries. Otrar's prosperity was only interrupted by the 13th century Mongol invasions when Genghis Khan laid siege to the city in the autumn of 1219. Отрар, вот мы сейчас с вами стоим на уровне построек Отрара, который датируется эпохой Тимур, это конец 14 начала 15 века. Но внизу под нами, а толще культурного топлослования Отрара, 18 метров, лежат слои и остатки города первых веков нашей эры. In fact, the history of Central Asia is perhaps the oldest history in the world certainly as old or older than Europe and, and, and Russia's history. And um, the site of Otrar is evidence of this, of a, of a highly developed and highly sophisticated urban civilization which goes back at least 2,000 years, including um, engineering, including water management, uh, very, very sophisticated um, artisans class, uh, political development, philosophy. So looking at our history now enables us to see that the history of Kazakhstan in general and the history of Central Asia in a larger context uh, is a history that is as rich if not richer than the history of any other region in the world. The Director General of UNESCO and Kazakhstan President Nazarbayev signed the agreement for the UNESCO project in Kazakhstan in April 2001. The project is funded by the UNESCO Japan Funds in Trust a special fund made available to UNESCO. I cited one concrete example of new cooperation in culture. And that is, uh, I signed a new agreement of uh, cooperation on preservation and restoration of uh, Otral. Otral you know, uh, was a very important you know, uh, personal in the ancient you know, Silk Road. UNESCO is very happy to launch a new project of uh, preservation and restoration you know, uh, with you know, uh, new financial assistance from uh, Japan. Stretching from China and Japan to Europe and the Adriatic coast, the Great Silk Road opened Eastern and Western cultures to one another. While the people traded, they also exchanged ideas, technologies, and cultural and philosophical concepts. Standing at the junction point of the Arius and Sir Daria rivers, Otrar is notable for several reasons. First and foremost, for its size and its place in history. At one time, this oasis, thanks to man-made irrigation, covered up to 700 square kilometers. Otrar is at a midpoint on the silk roads that once linked east and west as well as the northern nomadic cultures of the Central Asian steppes and the southern sedentary farming communities. Otrar is thus the first real expression of the synthesis of Kazakh culture of east and west and of nomadic and sedentary cultures and as such it holds a very important place in Kazakh history, culture and mythology. The enormous size of the oasis of Otrar the scale of its cultural remains and the need for future study make Otrar a site that is in urgent need of conservation. Many of the earthen structures excavated 30 years ago have now collapsed and those excavated more recently are quickly degrading. In April 2002 the building of a test house and laboratory was completed at the site, built in traditional Otrar style, made of mud brick with a thatched roof. This is now the home of the international and national experts as they work on the site, allowing laboratory experiments and conservation activities to be carried out in situ. 
To meet the technical problems for the preservation of the Otrar Tobes, UNESCO brings together the best qualified international and national experts. The objectives of the project include a strong documentation and research component, essential for better comprehension of these little understood sites, as well as for identifying the best means towards their conservation and preservation. Okay. The project will also develop the skills and expertise of Kazakh and Central Asian professionals involved in the safeguarding and conservation of their cultural heritage. In the case of Otra, consists of a sharks dam, which is uh, 600 by 800 meters, as I said. This means 48,000 square meters, plus 12 meters high. That means 600,000 cubic meters of earth, which had to be transported by people to build this hill. And outside this, you have a city with a diameter of almost two kilometers. This is even for European standards, and I mentioned it once. It's gigantic. Rome in the 12th century AD had only 12,000 people. Cologne, a famous German city, was consisting of seven or 8,000 people with a very small area of only three or four square kilometers. So you are dealing here with something which in relation to the size and the labor uh, phenomenon is a very big thing even compared to European standards. My first impression when I came here to Otra was, first, that it was a huge site. I mean, we're looking at more or less 200 square kilometers of, uh, of residential and, uh, and political activity in this area. And I did rather expect Otra to be a place where there would be nomads and yurtas and so forth. And so my first impression was surprise, surprise that such huge cities existed in uh, this hidden part of Asia, in a sense, the heart of Asia. Excavations at Otrar have revealed the remains of a spectacular earthen town, including structures from different religions, such as mosques and temples, as well as bathhouses, workshops, residential quarters and defensive walls. This is a brick from the 8th century. There are traces left by the palm of an ancient anonymous master. Otrar was a treasure chest for unique archaeological finds. Thousands of priceless artifacts, evidence of almost 2,000 years of prosperity, now decorate the collections of numerous museums around the world. Among the Otrar finds, are gold minted coins, glass, bronze, gold artifacts, and generously ornamented ceramics. The great Otra oasis lies halfway between the traditionally sedentary south of the Central Asian region and the steppes of the north inhabited by horse riding nomads. Indeed, these people were and still are today among the world's greatest horsemen. Otrar is located in the zone of the steppe, the zone of the steppe, and the zone of the steppe. This is a very natural niche. Otrar developed. Even the weather has proven to be a challenge for the Otrar project. The spring downpours and thunderstorms have hardly ceased and it is only the beginning of June and the temperature is already high. This is the local climate. In winter it may fall to minus 30 and in summer to plus 50 degrees centigrade. The preservation of the mud brick and earth structure towns of Otrar poses two unique technical problems. The first one is the severity of the climate. The second major problem is the enormous size of the Otra Oasis. Measuring over 200 square kilometers, the scale of the cultural remains in the oasis presents a great 
technical challenge. В рамках проекта, который осуществляется в Атараре, было очень много весомых, очень конструктивных предложений со стороны казахстанских именно специалистов, и они, в принципе, признаны международными экспертами. Of course, you know, working with the local experts is really good because they really know what you know these materials are, and they are more familiar with these materials than we are, and uh, and I'm learning. Of course, a lot from them, from this exchange of uh, ideas on building materials and deterioration and conservation, of course. So every proposal, every conservation proposal, it's all discussed together. In older villages near Biotrar, many buildings are still made of mud brick. And in fact, mud brick is widely used throughout the East, even in our days. Just after the arrival of summer and the hot weather, all of South Kazakhstan turns into a construction site. They build houses, cattle shelters, kitchens, and walls from mud brick. It is technologically appropriate and ecologically clean. It is well adapted to the local climate and easy to maintain. In short, it is the perfect local building material. Even after UNESCO's work is finished here in terms of the OTRAR site, the expertise continues. And to illustrate that, you can see that already we're using Kazakh experts who have been trained in the OTRAR project to come and advise us in work in Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. We've brought Kyrgyz and Tajik experts here to be trained at the OTRAR site. So already OTRAR has become a kind of a center or a pole for regional expertise. We have a site which is a model site for all of Central Asia. So we bring people from your neighboring republics here to be trained. So it's an investment in actual physical things, but it's also more than anything else an investment in people. The Otra Oasis covers an area of about 200 square kilometers and comprises not one single archaeological site, but rather a largely uninhabited and unspoiled landscape containing the remains of six ancient towns or tobes along with an extensive system of irrigation canals dating back 2,000 years. Otrar was first excavated in 1969, revealing the spectacular mud brick remains of large, typically Central Asian settlements, including a central citadel, suburbs, and earthen walls and fortifications. At the same time, these same spectacular ruins, which lay for so many centuries protected by sand and silt, are now exposed to rapid erosion from wind, rainfall, and human visitors. The oasis is in a marginal zone between what has historically been a nomadic area to the north and a predominantly sedentary one to the south, and this has had a marked effect on its development. The oasis constituted a peaceful agricultural, commercial, and cultural complex and served as a first step in attracting northern nomads, settling them, and thus importing elements of their nomadic culture into the sedentary societies. This is reflected in the town's planning, architecture, pottery, and jewelry. Archaeological excavations have brought to light the general plan of the territory as well as its irrigation systems, suburbs, and the earthen ruins of the towns. By studying the remains of the houses, canals, and roads, it is possible to observe the evolution of this interaction of cultures stage by stage, from their very beginnings to the period of final decay when the Silk Roads lost their importance and the towns their economic role. In its role as a contact zone between two cultures, the Otrar oasis can be compared with the oases of eastern Turkestan, such as Turfan and Kashgar. We have the lessons of history here to learn. 
uh, many, many lessons, and with the preservation of your culture and my culture and the world culture, we leave a lesson for future generations so that we advance uh, upwards towards the peace and prosperity that we all seek and do not repeat the mistakes that were made by our forefathers and in the time of history. There are very specific uh, indi uh, indigenous uh, monuments which not only should be possessed by one nation, but where the whole world can be proud of uh, their existence. And here we are with this World Heritage Programme, and I hope that we will be able to turn Otra in such a monument so that Kazakhstan can be proud of it, but also the world. Since the project was launched, there's been a remarkable upsurge in the number of visitors to the site from just over 9,000 in 1999 to nearly 100,000 three years later in 2002. According to the director of the Otrar Museum, a great part of this increase is from school children visiting the site, and he says that he sees this as one of the greatest impacts of the project thus far. As well as safeguarding and preserving the Otrar oasis, the project will also help to ensure the continued management and conservation of the site for future generations.